Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. My name is Adef, and this is PB Precipice. I nearly said Challenger Approaching, but I caught myself. We have a wonderful show planned for you all today as we continue the celebration of essentially one year of PB Precipice. There's a lot of magic happening these days on the Hot Fix, but some announcements first before we get into things. AGDQ 2023 online will be January 8th to the 15th. Submissions are closed. Stay tuned for the final schedule and uh, information will be posted on gamesunquick.com as we do have that second submission period still sort of churning uh, before the uh, final schedule is announced. And if you want to follow what Games Quick is up to, please use exclamation links in Twitch chat for all things GDQ. That's Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, I, I've said it every stream, but maybe we'll get a Snapchat. I don't know. Uh, probably not. But anyway, Dangers, hello. Welcome to Peak Precipice. How are you feeling? Oh, it's great to be here. It is very early for me, but you know what? I'm vibing anyways. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing well. Uh, what? What is it that we're... What is this video game that I'm looking at? I simply don't... I don't recognize it. Yeah, I mean, it's a very niche game. I don't think anybody would really know what it's all about, but uh, this is this is a video called Super Mario 64. I just don't get it. Um, what category <laughs> are you playing for us today? Uh, we're going to do 16 star. I think the 16 star is like the good, nice, approachable category for Super Mario 64. Um, it's not too long. You don't have to collect 70 stars and go into all the levels, which are if you haven't played this game, which nobody has because it's very niche. Uh, notoriously difficult video game to play, especially if you're used to some of the cushy kind of um, niceties that modern platformers provide in this game. Uh, I hate to say it, but maybe didn't age so well, so it's hard to control this game as it turns out. Um, so 16 Star is great because it's a nice, short, sweet little punch. Um, the tricks that you have to do are not too hard to actually get to the end of the game. Um, but, you know, it's still, it's still fun. You still feel kind of satisfied by it. So that's what we're going to do. Fantastic. Well, whenever you're ready to start doing attempts here, uh, you're more than welcome to. I'll remind everybody that sort of the, the main central thesis of PB Precipice is that you are allowed to reset as much as you would like, especially for a category this short. Uh, Dangers has no is not beholden to really anything other than let's just see one finished run at some point today. Yes. Um, so we're, we're totally chilling. Um, should we start with a no reset, maybe? If you want to, yeah, you can structure this however you'd like. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, we can we can definitely try that. It might require some some deaths and some uh, big time losses, but I, I think I could probably do that to start us out. Sweet. Let's see. Okay. So uh, is that um, people have been speedrunning it since dinosaurs walked the earth? So um, it has a timing method that's a little bit obscure, a little bit bizarre. It actually starts on power up of the console rather than file select, like a lot of other games are. Um, so if you're wondering why the timer is starting like now, um, that's why. It's just because for some reason it's on power up of the console instead of actually uh, selecting the file. You know, those eight seconds are very important. Keep that well, in mind. the pressing start quickly and then meaningfully selecting a file is important inputs. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's you know, sort of the, it the like, the, yeah, the old rationale of like JRTA or SDA timing. Like this. Yes. Go from co a console power on or first meaningful input until last meaningful input. So when you say JRTA, that isn't Japanese real-time attack, is it? Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> I never heard that that acronym before. So. Oh really? Actually. Yeah. Uh yeah, J JRTA timing is like the um. I thought you were doing a meme to help the audience. <laughs> uh yeah no um. JRTA is the the acronym for like Japanese RTA timing. Yeah, because I did I did know that they kind of like you know the Japanese speedrunning community kind of branched off and was doing its own thing kind of in tandem with people in North America doing their own speedrunning thing. So the rules were different across the ocean, I guess you could say. Yeah, JRTA timing classically is like, uh, in a lot of RPGs, is like, go until you see the credits. Like, um, start from either like console on or first meaningful input and see the, the end screen. Uh, right. It's just a different way of doing things, but as 
the years have progressed and as the communities have sort of reconjoined, uh, you know, things have sort of, some communities have stuck with JRTA, some communities have decided to go with something new, but SM64 is still rocking the sauce. They, they sure do be. Um, and there's a lot of traditional elements to Super Mario 64 speedrunning. I think that, like, there are a lot of people who get into this game and they kind of embrace whatever they feel like, which is great. I think you should speedrun however you feel. Um, but there are, like, three different platforms to play this game on. There's emulator and there's virtual console and there's also... Um, uh, there's also the original hardware, of course. And they all have their own leaderboards separated. Nope, of course not. Of course not. Just like I said in practice, remember? Yes, I do recall. It's gonna uh, be great. I, it's funny, like... Oh. Oh. Um, this is a game where I take everything for granted. Like, explanation-wise. Um, like, I'm like, do we need to explain Owlus? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, I like... Mean? It's the game that you assume everybody, like, memes aside at the beginning. You assume everybody has seen everything that's going on here, but I, I still think it bears repeating. I think it still bears explanation, because, you know, I'm sure there are some people in here who are like, what, uh, what are you doing? That's not where you're supposed to go. Right, there's an owl that uh, dangers has skipped that carries you up to the cage. Yes. Uh, and nice cannon list set up. We love Nailed to it. see it. That's, yeah. the, that's the classic set <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're definitely supposed to just run off the bridge instead of, like, ledge grabbing there. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Classic. Uh, so I just got another moon off to the side, because I missed Moon? Oh, moon. my goodness. Do I even know what game I'm playing? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Too much Odyssey in my brain. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Womp's Fortress is probably where, like, all of my runs are going to reset today, because there's Owlless and there's Cannonless, and I kind of only get one shot at Owlless. And I get two shots at Cannonless. Here we go. Uh, if I miss Cannonless the first time, I can just go around the corner and get shoot into the wild blue. But yeah, if I miss those two tricks, then each miss is probably about eight seconds of time loss. So uh, that that adds up pretty fast. Yeah. So that was that was an abridged version of uh, Sock Folder's Cannonless setup from like 2014, 2015. Yeah, that's what I they call the texture setup. Because the sock folder setup is like you grab a ledge, um, and then you do like a backflip, and then you like punch. And it's like, it's just a bunch of like movements that put you in exactly the right place you need to be. Um, and at the end of the day, people just kind of realize that like, oh, so we're doing all of this stuff so that we can get Mario to grab the ledge of the bridge on this particular spot. So instead of doing all of that, they kind of just figured out a setup where it's like, okay, well, if we can see the texture of the wood on the side of the bridge, we can just kind of, like, walk off there, and it should still work. And lo and behold, I just chose the wrong star. So we're just gonna... We're just gonna... I'm just gonna jump off the side. Oh, did you accidentally... <laughs> did you accidentally go back in? Yeah, I went back into... Uh, chip off Womp's block or whatever. So I wasn't going to get the tower. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of need that. Uh, it's still early in the morning, so please allow this me is some the, grace. This is the, uh, this is the, you know, shake off the everything run. Exactly, yeah. We get to see everything that's about to happen, and then later on, hopefully, I, you know, I kind of sharpen up a little bit, and things go a little bit better, instead of losing a minute in Womp's Fortress. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, that made perfect sense, Mario. Thank you for whatever that was. I do think that, like, you know, aside from the strict glitches, like, I mean, even BLJ, like, stuff in this game is really self-explanatory. Like, it's pretty clear what's happening most of the time, I feel like. Um, yes. Yes. Like, it's not, di like, even Lakitu skip, like, if you know the Lakitu is there, it's pretty obvious what has just occurred. Yes. It, yeah, he's, like, sitting at the front door, if you do the trick right. And you're like, oh, um, well, I think you broke something. I can't really tell what, but you definitely broke something. Also, just for the fans, because this is obviously, oh, she's, she's in here. Please leave me alone. 
Just for She's the fans. push you off the edge, dude. Well, that's what I'm going to do to her offspring. So. Goodbye. Punch them all. Good luck, dude. Oh my god, dude. Go! Sheesh. I heard violence today. <laughs> I woke up today and chose violence. <laughs> that's okay. That's the only time I'm going to do that. Don't worry. We have to go fast. We don't have time to, to do that every time. <laughs> um, actually... Oh, that's not good. That's not what you do. You know, I said lack of two skip was something sweet. Oh, but... I actually don't know. Is it based on the fact that you are... I, I assume it's based on the fact that you only land on that spot for like a frame or something and not based on the fact that it's like collision necessarily? Like what? what is the... Do you know? Um, I mean, I imagine that the bridge like... I, I don't know the exact explanation, but I imagine that like the, the surface of the bridge has like, you know detection that if Mario is standing on it then the cutscene right. for lack of two begins. Right. Um, but you're kind of like landing on the edge of the railing so that you're like half on and half off and so you probably don't activate it because the game doesn't think that you've like properly landed on the bridge. That would be my guess. And you have to go fast right? You can't land on that spot and then like, Correct. Like you have to so there's probably something to do with like number of frames spent still or something. Yeah. I can be kind of slow on my long jump and it can still work, so like so maybe as not. long as as long as that long jump happens, I think you're okay. As long as you don't like wiggle over to the left or to the right, I mean. You should be okay. This is probably my favorite level in the entire speedboard too. This one here. I just like the amount of practice and the amount of like movement and you're fighting against uh, you're fighting against like uh, platform cycles and stuff like that. Like you have to kind of go fast in order for this level to work in the first place, which is kind of you know it's just very satisfying when everything goes right. I guess it's one of those kinds of levels. But so much can go wrong as well. I do love the eight red coin collection in speedruns in this game. It's very nice to watch. Yeah, in this level in particular. Yeah, 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 in this one, specifically. I love the long jumps at the end, where you, like, are long jumping past the pillars and collect the coin on the way. Yes. How often, these days, do you ground pound instead of long jumping? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, more than I am, I would like to admit, to be honest. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, when I first started speedrunning this game, it was like, it was an obnoxious amount. It was like, you know, at the beginning of every level, basically. Now, dipping my head underneath is not for no reason. I actually have a second controller um, that I do Bowser throw. Dude, he does the dance for me all the time. I'm kind of about it. Um, that dance saves time just because I get to grab Bowser's tail a little bit closer. I have a separate controller because I don't know if you guys have held an N64 controller in your hands before, but the control stick is, for lack of a better word, absolute garbage. It is the worst, um, especially if your objective is to spin the control stick a bunch. It just like it has a lot of dead zones and doesn't actually register those inputs very well. So I have a controller that is an N64 controller, but it has a GameCube um, control stick like modified into it instead. Um, so those dead spots are not a problem and the spinning goes much better. Uh, you'll see a lot of top level runners will use a, what's called a Hori gamepad, which is kind of the same idea, except it doesn't, it's not an alien three prong controller like the N64 controllers. It's more of like a, almost like a circular pad. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain unless you've seen one. Uh, aren't Hori's kind of tough to come by these days? Yeah, I think so. Which is why I settled for the controller that I have. I found, I found it at like a, a retro game store. Um, but yeah, basically just takes like a, a GameCube control stick slot, which the GameCube control sticks are great, um, and replaces the, this control stick, which like, I don't know, it's hard to describe the, the jankiness of a Nintendo 64 control joystick if you've never seen one. I, uh, I am, I will admit, I'm an N64 controller apologist. 
<laughs> but even I will gladly admit and proudly that the analog stick is stinky. It is very stinky. Um, you might game I, over here, Mr. Man. Yeah, I'm kind of close to that. Not, not looking great. Nah, you'll be fine. Just don't fall in the quicksand. Okay, or yeah, maybe I can just do that. Oh, okay, now my butt's on fire. This is going great. This is going just great. This is, I'm glad that this is the, uh, <laughs> the the first showcase of my abilities here on the GBQ Hotfix <laughs> well, show. Well, this, this sets a low bar, and then you're going to absolutely demolish expectations. That's true, I guess, yeah. That's a good way of looking at it. A very optimistic way of looking at it. <laughs> You know me, ever the optimist. That's right. That's right. I am in danger. I think I'm just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna play. And if I do game over, then I guess that's just how it's gonna be. You know? There you go. I like to, I like to live dangerously. Dangerously. Yo, that's me. <laughs> I like this star. Yeah, me too. I don't know why it's so satisfying to just watch. It's really easy. Yeah. But, I don't know, there's something satisfying about just, like, diving across the Bowser puzzle. Um, Lethal Lava Lion gets a bit of a facelift if I were to do the LBLJ route. Oh, okay, we gotta punch Todd. Just, Mario is out for, for blood today, it seems. Um... Yeah, so you'll you'll notice that I'm not doing the LBLJ route. Anybody who knows Super Mario 64 speedrunning, LBLJ stands for Lobby Backwards Long Jump. Um, basically, a strat that you can use to get into Bowser in the Dark World like first, instead of having to collect eight stars. Um, it's a very difficult strat, and then not only is it like a hard trick to do, but it kind of changes the entire route of the speedrun, and it's something that I haven't really uh, dove into yet. So. We are kind of sticking with the quote-unquote beginner route just to make things a little bit easier. And you can see by my sum of best, if you guys are familiar with the splits, that even with this route, I can still shave off like over a minute's worth of time. So um, we can still... We are on the precipice of PB. I think your uh, sum of best might be just chopped off the layout uh, on, on the restream. But, uh, what is it the... Is uh, 17, what is the 1722. 1722. Yeah, so I mean, there's like different ways to look at your sum of best, right? Like, and how, f you know, what the difference is between it and your PB. And you could argue that, like, there's two interpretations when you're. Actually, no, when your sum of best is like a minute away on a game of this length, it definitely means you're just close. Like, full stop. Yeah. Yeah. Like... PB will be soon. When it comes to games with like minimal RNG, um, Spike and I kind of use the same uh, uh, judgment metric, which is like for every minute that passes, and of course it, it does kind of vary from game to game and depending on how difficult it is and stuff, but uh, for every minute that passes, you can lose one second and that's like, if you're at the top of your game, that's a pretty reasonable expectation. So if you go by that metric, like I have lots of time to save, right? Because this run is only like 20 minutes long and I'm like over a minute off, so. I have never heard that before. Yeah, it's very prevalent in Odyssey. I think that Odyssey is like one of the games where that is like extremely true. So you think you should be within 59 seconds of your Odyssey sum of best? Yes. At, at, at minimum. Correct. Or no, at, at most. Like, that's where you want to be. That's, yeah. Like, if if you're playing at your your kind of, like, peak level, then that's that's a pretty reasonable expectation. It's not very easy to do, mind right. you, but that's, that's what I mean. It's like a kind of like a peak performance thing. Oh, Mario, where are you going? Huh. Excuse me. Oh, I certainly did. We're still in Lethal Lava Land. I'm, uh... <laughs> I'm slacking here. Hold on. Get some lag jams in the chat. <laughs> so you can tell I'm playing on the original hardware. You can tell I'm playing on N64 because that level lags like crazy. Um, and going back to kind of the traditionalist mindset that I was talking about in Super Mario 64, um, like if you play on virtual console or if you play on emulator, you tend to not run into those problems. 
um, because they just they're more optimized. They don't run like the N64 does, so you don't you don't run into problems of like the game lagging a lot. Um, whereas I guess there's like a level of skill that can be kind of claimed for avoiding the lag and kind of performing quickly in spite of it. So you know that's kind of the mindset of the Super Mario 64 community anyway. That was a weird ledge grab. Yeah, I've always had changing opinions on that whole debate, but as somebody that does not play this game, I've never felt it important to voice any of those thoughts. Yeah, and again, to each their own, you're allowed to speedrun the game in whatever way you choose, and a lot of people who, like, first start speedrunning this game, they just kind of don't care about that logic, they don't care about well, yeah, there is skill to avoiding the lag, but also lag is really annoying, so I'm going to play in a way that doesn't deal with that, and that's right. totally fine. So, um, And it turns out that the lag obviously does make Super Mario 64 playthrough it. quite a bit slow. But if you look at speedrunner.com, you'll see that the N64 times are actually more... Um, like, they're faster, they're more optimized for the same reasons that just, like, most of the top-level runners take it more seriously to play on N64, so... Yeah, I think... I don't know. My, my opinion has always been that, like... I think it's cool that they want to do that, and if they all do it, like, hats off. Like, that's great. Um, and it is really cool. Like, a lot of the lag reduction strats in 120 are, like, so sick. Um, my issue has always been a worry of gatekeeping, of like, people who are like, you must play on N64. Nice build, Jimmy. Uh, and then if there's like a new perspective runner who just has a Wii, they're like, oh, I, I guess I can. Yeah. Um, that's always been my worry, but, you know, assuming that doesn't happen very often, then I'm cool, that's cool. Yeah. I don't think it's as... I don't think the community is as elitist as that, you know what I mean? No. So, that's a good start. That's a great... Yep, perfect. That's exactly how you do Bowser in the Sky, just like that. Take notes, everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking notes. Let's right, try Round two. Fight! Much better. Just a cheeky little triple jump there. I like this level a lot too. Yeah. Um, I don't even go for like all of the difficult strats in this as well, because some of them are kind of beyond me. And I know that like if I were to get Bowser in the sky on like PB pace and I went for some of them and I failed them, like I, I gotta get over that hurdle eventually, but right. I know that I can I know that I can improve quite a bit without me, so Yeah. Oh well that's great. Yep. Oh good job, Marty. I'm very proud of you on this day. <laughs> Martio is making your father proud. <laughs> yeah. You're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> Alright, now kick kick the ball. Kick it's been yeah. past you. Now kick kick it. For, into the goal, honey. No, the other goal. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> honey, how'd you feel about the game? It went great. All right. Well, you know, you that's really all tried. that matters. You, that's... you tried, sport. <laughs> that was a, that Goomba was a little feisty. Yeah, he's the true final boss, I think. That Goomba. Yeah, not this guy. No. I mean, I would say that, like, out of all the Mario games, at least this one feels difficult, um, if only because it's a timing challenge, um, whereas a lot of other Mario games kind of fall flat in their difficulty in the final boss, in my opinion. Uh, Galaxy definitely fits well. Sunshine as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, nice throws. throws. Sunshine... I will say the final boss in Sunshine played quickly is always fun. Yes. Um, but yes, Odyssey, I would agree. 
It's Odyssey one also phase. falls pretty flat, though there is oh, some but fast the music track. and the hair, his hair. Don't forget about his hair. Bowser? Yeah. Wait, does he have hair in that final boss? Bowser's, yeah. I mean, he has a hat on, right? And then he throws the hat at you and he reveals his hair underneath. And it's like all slick to the side and looking. looking oh my god, he has hair. Wedding. Wow, yeah. I don't I mean, know ba- that I've ever seen this. I mean, Bowser's always had hair, but. It, right, 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 right. But it's it's combed. Yeah. I mean, he got to look got to look nice on his wedding day, you know. Hey, you got to respect that. That's right. All right. So now that we've seen the, the run all the way through and we've seen all the mistakes that you can make, clearly, um, let's do the one without Me, any of those. Mario. How about? I'd like that. I would also like that. Also, I didn't game over. Uh, there were plenty of places where I could have died, especially in the hey, sky. But here we are, not doing that. So that's pretty Yours cool. Truly. Princess hey, good luck. Yo, thanks. Adef, do you have any experience speedrunning Super Mario 64 for your Nintendo 64? Uh, at at Speedrun Coliseum. Oh I yeah, that's right. Picked up the <laughs> controller and made a fool of myself a few times. <laughs> Um, other than that, no. I don't like this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is an incredibly unpopular opinion, and I know that, which is why I rarely say it. So it's but, funny that you say that, because, yeah. like, I kind of agree. Um, I remember returning to this game in my adulthood, like, probably about a year ago, when 3D All-Stars came out. I was like, okay, let's get all 120 stars. Like, let's just do it. Like, let's play all... 120 stars. This it's just came out on the Switch. It's gonna be great. I got Shifting Sandland, and I wanted to throw the controller. And no, not very many games make me do that. Um, I, but I feel a little bit spoiled by modern platforming Mario games because, like Odyssey, you know they, you know, you have to give them a little bit of slack because this was the very first 3D Mario game, and like there weren't very many other examples to really go off of. Um, and it, it's true that it didn't age very well, and that's kind of a shame. Um, oops, that's not how you do that. It's me. But um, it's I do me, think, it, the fun, in my opinion, is that this game makes a better speed game than it makes a casual play. Oh, oh, Why yeah. No, my my opinion is that, like, as a speedrun, it's so unbelievably cool. Like, yes. the, to, to watch is so interesting. Um, and a, as a spectator, like... You know, there's great stories and, and, and amazing tech. Um, but yes, uh, casually, I think this game is big doggy doo doo. Um, yeah. Mainly, just... and that's not to say it was big doggy doo doo at the time. Right. Like, like Dangerous is saying, this game revolutionized gaming. I mean, it's undeniable the impact that this game has had, and its design principles are 15, 20 years ahead of its time. For sure. um, but, you know, Sometimes you got to be the first, and sometimes being first means that you got to you got to make the mistakes. Wrong. You got to yep. make the mistakes, and it just doesn't hold up. Like I think Ocarina of Time aged well. I do not think this game aged well. Yeah, absolutely, Ocarina of Time aged well. I would say, um, yeah. But a casual experience of this game today is definitely spoiled by the fact that we have games that have done it much better um and it, it falls flat in a couple of main places the the, the number one being the camera i think i don't think anybody really has a um would i don't i think it would be like a unanimous decision that the camera is like the worst part of, of this game um which is kind of a shame because when it comes to um you know making a, a platforming game playable the camera is a kind of underrated part of that experience so having to fight with a camera makes the experience you know kind of frustrating oh for sure but that's why it makes a good speed game is because speedrunners kind of have that sense they, they understand that the camera is a really important part of it, and so it is a part of the strategy to be good with the camera as well as the controls themselves. So that's what makes it such a good speed game is because you are kind of in control of that aspect of it, and then you don't have to fight with it anymore because you know exactly what it's going to do every time. I think there are a lot of games that people like 
these yeah. days talk about as like the holy grail of Here gaming that if they went back and played now they'd be like oh this is not very good <laughs> Um, yeah, I think you're probably right. Do you have any examples? Yeah, Sonic Adventure 2 is like the number one example that always comes to mind. For sure. I, I played that game as a kid. I liked it as a child. If you play it now, it is like undeniably bad. Like it, SM64 has some problems and I'm iffy about it. I think Sonic Adventure 2 is like a bad game. <laughs> but the Chow Garden. Uh, I, I, okay. Respect where respect is due. I do love a chow guard. How can you not? Damn, this trick really do be giving you the sauce today. Yeah, it give me the sauce every day. I think, like, out of all the tricks that I do in this run, Owl, this is probably the hardest one. Which is why I say that we're probably going to be resetting in Wasp Fortress. I told you today. <laughs> Cannonless yes, itself is quite easy, but... Dear Mario, but yeah. please come to the castle. And if you like, if you like Sonic Adventure 2 or SM64, that's fine. That's good, yeah. even. Liking You're... things is cool. Yeah. These are objective opinions. They should not be taken as fact. Please do not write angry things about us on Twitter.com. Or do. I don't know. I, I once heard there's no such thing as bad press. That's true. That's, I guess that's a good point. But yeah, I'm not trying to get into a flame war. It's been a rough week, so uh, if we could, uh, if we could uh, not do that, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have gotten Lakitu skip every time, so that's kind of cool. Of course you have. There we go again. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I wouldn't even say that Super Mario 64 is necessarily a bad game because I think that the the nostalgia for sure, but also just like setting the tone for the games that follow it is something that kind of outweighs the fact that it didn't age well, I guess if that makes sense. So oh, yeah. I'm still I'm still willing I'm still willing to call it a good game despite it's yes, uh, I, I, I think when I say this game is bad, I mean my opinion of it, but my, <laughs> yeah. I think ob I think Mario. objectively this game is good. Right. Hello. Are now, all games born good or evil? No, I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I will say Sonic Adventure 2 does open with Escape from the City as its opening track. So maybe it is a good game. That is a banger. That bass I used lick. to... Oh, it's straight up. Wow, wow, baby, wow, 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 wow! Rolling yeah! around at the speed of sand. What a banger. I used to make fun of Sonic games. As a Mario fan, I used to make fun of Sonic games for having lyrics in their songs, and then Odyssey came out, and I was like, well, can't, uh, can't fall back on that one anymore. Uh, okay, but it's kind of Okay, but to be fair, me. the Odyssey music that has lyrics is really good. <laughs> That's true. That is true. They, they really went hard on the puns in um, Break Free, Lead the Way. There's so many, like, you know, Mario gaming references in that song. It's, like, not even fair. Every single line. It's like, hey, I did that in this game. I, I, I did. I smashed the blocks. I, I, that's what I, I jumped. I did that, too. Jump oh, my up, God. They're talking about caps. Super star. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the yeah, idea are. behind New Donk City, like, as a premise, like, makes no sense to me. <laughs> like, I can't believe we're already talking about New Donk City, but I, I thought it, I really thought it would take longer than this. Uh, no, just for you and I to get on the, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if we think about the kingdoms in Odyssey as, like, places where people live, right? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, we start at Cap Kingdom. All the Cap people live there. That's right. Then we go to Cascade Kingdom. Cascade Kingdom, to me, feels like a wilderness area. Like, sure. we've gotten a glimpse of it. Maybe there is a, a local authority somewhere in a distant island. They have power lines. So, you know, people are nearby to some extent. And then we go, what's after that? What's after Sand. Cascades? Sand. Okay, the Shy Guys live there. There's a town. 
Okay. Yeah. After that, we got ends. what? Like lake. Yep. Okay. There's all the mer people. That's okay. right. Okay. It's, it's a town. And then after that, and and uh, I think the central theme that is important to recognize here is that perhaps somewhat, you know, uh, uh, diminishing. Every kingdom basically has one race of characters within. Like it's basically just shy guys and like just cap people. And like, that's fine. I don't understand the geopolitics of Mario. Nope. Um, or what their, you know, affiliations are. Right, maybe there, maybe there's a, a war going on between the cap people and the shy guys, I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, so then after Lake, is what cloud yeah well okay. there's Cl wooded cloud. as well but. right clouds like not real yeah it's, like, it's it's just imaginary right i think calling it cloud kingdom is just a nice thing that the united nations of mario decided to do same thing with um, ruined i think it's just it's yeah. just kind of there well ruined might have been a um you know the name implies and so does the area that this was a massive kingdom at some point yes and I'm kind of sad that it isn't still, but we yes, digress. Yes, um, uh, Wooded Kingdom has robots. And yes. that's it. Uh, and nut people. Nut people? Uh, you know, the leg leggy boys. <laughs> <laughs> the good old nut people. <laughs> <laughs> the extendos. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about. I do. The, the, the I upper, mean, they're the, they're the enemies. Boys. They're enemies technically, but I I don't know. They feel like people to me. Um, and uh, what's after what's after wooded? Lost. Okay, Lost Kingdom. I feel like it's in the name. It's been lost. Yep. Caterpillars live there, though, undeniably. That's true. There are caterpillars there. Uh, I also hope everybody's enjoying this walkthrough of Super Mario Odyssey that's <laughs> happening. Um, okay, I'm and then after it. after Lost is is New Donk City, right? Is is Metro Kingdom? Correct. So okay, what is your gripe with that? We've arrived at the point. Yes. Metro Kingdom is arguably the most normal of all of them. In that, like, it's a city, and you can see in the distance that there are tons of cities floating in the sky question mark um true. but there are the new donkeys right these like the new donk citizens these are people humans even who live here okay so that we all get and pauline is the mayor wonderful where does donkey kong and his family fit into this picture i don't know yeah that's a great it, question is the implication that the new donk citizens have evolved from monkeys in the same way that we did. And, you know, New Donk City is this millions years old institution that used to be ruled by the apes. Yeah, because I mean, all of the street names are named after Donkey Kong characters as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. So like where, I mean, aside from in the festival in the 2D section where he's throwing barrels at you, where does Donkey Kong fit in? Is he, Peach. is he uh, the like de facto president? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's impossible. Maybe he is the uh, if Bowser is the king of the the evil faction that exists within this world. Donkey Kong may be president. Who knows? But also, something needs to be said about the fact that we are trying to dissect a Mario game. Uh, a game series that has absolutely no ties or affiliations between games, aside from the fact that they use the same characters, uh, versus like Zelda, which I think that fans and even Nintendo has kind of leaned into having a continuum of some kind. Mario does not have that at all. So <laughs> if we're trying to dissect it, um, it is for semantics and semantics only, I think. No, this matters to me. Oh, okay. This, this is very important. <laughs> okay, a, a, a great point, to be fair, a great point has just been raised in the chat room. I'm ready. Somebody said, what happened to Old Donk City? And that's making me think, maybe Old Donk City was Donk, was the monkey place. Uh-huh. Okay. And then when, when New Donk City was founded, out of respect for Old Donk City, 
they named everything after the DK crew. That would make sense. Let's get Shigeru on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> I would like to phone a friend. Let's talk to Mr. Miyamoto. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Miyamoto, what do you mean by this? Please explain. We have some thoughts and some queries. Yeah, how, how deep do the parallels between New York and New Donk really run? Not deep. No. There's like an Empire State Building equivalent, and that's about it. That's, yep. And also, it's a bustling city. And everybody talks uh, weird. That's true. I just take me full. Did you so full get <laughs> Oh, Ted. Yay! Yo! <laughs> I just want to die. <laughs> I killed myself today. Okay. <laughs> Yay! <No. laughs> that will never Pauline... not make me laugh. <laughs> what does Pauline say? Like, does she have little voice signs or she's just like, wow! Yeah, she kind of just like makes really high pitched noises, I think. That's what I thought. She, she gets very excited about things. Cannonless. Wow. Yeah, cannonless. I'm yelling. I'm yelling at my the whole trick career. for you. I'm yelling at it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna need you to do that one more time because we have to do it again. Hey, you better work, or I'm gonna get so mad. <laughs> That's right. Video game trick. You better work. That's right. You tell him. Somebody in chat says, "In my head, cannon." Oh my god. Yes, but okay, the DK president in the 2D night transition is, is, in my opinion, like a robot that's part of the party. Uh, which was? The the Donkey Kong president in the 2D part of New Donk City during the uh, the festival. Yeah. Is like a is like a an installation. It's like a part of the party. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because I think the 2D parts of New Donk City during the festival are supposed to be like light shows, and Mario is able to go inside of them. And I don't think that was, I don't think they were built with that intent by the New Donk citizens. Yeah. But we are getting way too deep into the weeds here. <laughs> But somebody said that it is their headcanon that the Mario in Donkey Kong, the arcade cabinet, is Mario Sr. saving Pauline, and then Mario Jr. is the Mario we know and love. Oh my goodness. And I mean, there is apparently evidence that, like, Cranky Kong is the original Donkey Kong. So, you know, draw from that whatever you will. But Mario I just... could also be an unaging entity. I, yeah, he's the Ash Ketchum of the... Well, I guess Ash Ketchum's the Ash Ketchum of the gaming world, but... True. Ash Ketchum finally won the, the game. Did. did. you hear? He, 25 he, years I, later. Oh, I heard. This is very he's important. The, are you seeing this? Are you four. hearing this? Are you, have you seen this? Ash Ketchum, we knew he could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've always believed in Ash. Mr. Ketchum. <laughs> yep, Mr. Ketchum he, is very funny to me. Mr. Ketchum. <laughs> Mr. Ketchum, world champion. Everybody's saying it. Everybody's saying it, Charizard. Very important. <laughs> All right, we will not be throwing the penguin off the cliff today. You're welcome, Chad. How old is he? He's unagingly 10. Yes. I saw a tweet the other day that said... Uh, Ash Ketchum being 10 for 25 years old and finally being world champion is the job description on every LinkedIn. Yes, exactly that. Yes, it's like, you know, expecting Five years you experience, be Entry level years old. position. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Must have saved world at least twice, also undergraduate degree. Well, okay, that was an interesting bonk. Oh, that's an interesting camera angle. This game is very good. Not dead, though. That's true. That was a pretty good save. Nice. 
the numbers are red, um, which is usually a bad sign, but that's okay because we have lots of time saved. So don't worry. Don't fret. So under your estimation, that was my estimation. Yeah, you know, the railing is there. Collision is great. You would rather be like 18 or 19 seconds off of your sum of best to believe that you are playing to your potential. I think so, yeah. Which would be very hard. I would have to like make no mistakes and the BLJs right. would have to go well. Um, it is a bit of an ambitious thing to suggest, but when you look no, at like the but... top of the game, um, when you look at like the people who are like genuinely getting the world records and stuff, then that is pretty pretty close to accurate. Like um, Slippery Nip, for example, I think is like second or third in this category. Um, and when you look at his sum of best versus like his PB, he's about 20 seconds off. So it is pretty pretty darn close um, to that kind of one second per thing that I was kind of mentioning before. Right, that like theoretical limit. Yeah. Um, that's a really interesting perspective. I wonder if you could then extrapolate based off that number and be like, okay, since I'm a minute off my sum of best and I want to be 20 seconds off, my PB chance is 66% because it's two-thirds larger or whatever. Right. But that's... You know, now we're doing really hand-wavy maths. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a little bit too complicated thinking too much about it. And of course, there's stuff to be said about like, oh, well, I know my sum of S can improve. Another Bowser dance. I think my cart is like blessed. Because that does not like the actual odds of getting the Bowser dance, I think are one in 10. And even I mean, like my last one, I got the Bowser dance like four times and I made it to Bowser like 15 times. So that is like insanely good odds. And we've made it to Bowser twice today, and he's danced both times. So there's something going on here. There's some there's some dark magic afoot. Pog. Yes, I'll take the time save. I, I certainly won't complain about it. How big is the time save? Like a second? Uh, yeah, it's like half a second or something like that. It's not nothing we take crazy. Those. We, we take those. those. All right, how do we feel entering the basement? Um, I mean, we're doing okay. That was not great movement, but we're doing okay. Um, I'm kind of just thinking, like, the basement itself is not too difficult. Not a lot of the stars can really trip me up here unless I kind of make a big mistake. So I'm basically just waiting for the Dire Dire Dock split to come around. That's where I have to like deal with MIPS and like clip through the doors and stuff. Right. Um, that's where I can definitely lose big time if I'm not being careful. Oh, well, well, of course, if I miss the Shy Guy, then that's also a problem, so. Unfortunately, there's no real good backup for this aside from just coming over here. Climbing this pole here. Oh, and missing completely and having to hopefully catch the bird on the way by. There we go. Birdbin, Birdbin got. Birdbin got. Okay, 10 seconds of leeway. This is perfectly fine. Perfectly really fine. Nothing can go wrong here. Okay, okay, yep. <laughs> this game is great. Good and fair. Very good. Now, the reason that I am continuing this has a little bit to do with what we just mentioned. Um, I know that my gold splits are not perfect in this category. I know that if I do everything correct in the Dire Dire Dox one, I can probably gold by a couple more seconds. Um, I know that if I do Bowser in the Sky perfectly, I can probably gold by a couple more seconds. So it kind of helps to just like continue with that knowledge, just in case, you know, just in case we, we pop off and we do really well. Holding on to the dream, baby. 
That's right. That's what speedrunning is all about. That's right. I think um, it's really easy to kind of let your mindset dictate the way that you play in speedrunning. It's really easy to be like, oh, well, I just lost, like, big time in one of the early splits, and I could just, like, go back to the beginning and reverse that, you know? I only made it, like, three minutes in, so why not just, like, hit the reset button and try again? But you never know. Like, one of those runs, if you just keep playing instead of, like, resetting over and over and over and over again, one of those runs could just have, like, a really good late game and you would still win. Um, but it's easy to get, kind of get into your own mind sometimes. So I'm going to try and avoid that while I'm on this show, just to try and prove that point correct. Nice. Here we go. Yep, so we only have four seconds of leeway, which is perfectly fine. This Yep, PB inevitable. But I think that's how I'm going to run this show, is like, we're going to... Unless I make, like, some pretty glaring mistakes in, like, Womp's Fortress, like you saw me, see me do, then... Um, if we get into the basement especially, then I think I'll just go until best possible time says I can't do it anymore. It's always been interesting to me that, like, I mean, obviously... You know... Collecting the star is not the point of getting mips, but it's funny that the star is left behind. Yes. I'm a particularly big fan of that myself. Okay. That's the that's the mercy kill there. We could take our first break at next reset, if that works sure. for you. Yeah, that works perfectly fine. How are you feeling? Are you awake yet? Nope. Cheers to that. But I'm here and having a good time. I don't usually stream at this time. Um... And I realized that, like, the window that is, like, right behind the camera is, like, catching some glare off my desk and has, like, been lighting my face up. I I've got the beauty shot going a little bit here. Um, it's a good it look. looks great. It looks yeah. great. I'm positively glowing. Glowing. <laughs> okay. This is the one. We're going to go into a break having PB'd, coming back on the precipice of another one. That's right. Now, have you ever done this show where the PB has happened really early and then, um, like, they come, you come back from break and they PB again? Has that ever happened on the show? Um... Oh my gosh. I don't know. There's been a lot of shows. <laughs> uh, more often than not, people do not PP. Yes. Um, but we have had people who come with a game that they're, they're like relatively new to. They PB a lot. Um, I think Bobby, who was the first official show, because you were the first. The reason you're on right now is you were the first. Technically, first episode of PB Precipice was you playing Galaxy. You can reset one more time. Do another one. Oh. Um, and uh, so the it's me. the first Mario. official episode was Bobby doing uh, Castlevania Hello. Aria Hello. of Sorrow. It's oh. one of the Game Boy Advance ones. Hey, Mario. Gotcha. Uh, anyway, I think he PB'd a good Let's amount. Uh, Catalyst was on a couple shows ago and did Elden Ring All Remembrances Glitchless and PB twice. Okay. But that's a long run, so I don't really remember. Um, Circle of the Moon. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. Uh, so to answer your question, Dangerous, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like yes. I Maybe? Perhaps. Okay. Hopefully I can continue that tradition then. Of not really knowing if it has happened or not. Yes. Well, no, I think you should just do it. <laughs> Let's make it definitive fact. Yeah. Add it to the PB Precipice wiki. That's right. That is, you know, a bustling community. 
That's right. Very fierce and loyal editors. I mean, the community is, it grows every day. <laughs> every day. There's more lore than you would think, I mean, to be fair. There's at least two pages on that wiki if it exists. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Wow. That's kind of that spicy. It, not that it really matters if golding by point zero, but that's fine. You know, it's we take those wins when we can get them. And then Frames. immediately followed by a ground pound. <laughs> Welcome to SM64. Love that. So I, I learned recently that this game has, like, a priority system. If you press two buttons on the same frame, then it will automatically kind of pick the order of operations. Um, and it's supposed to pick Z before A, but sometimes it just kind of doesn't do that, which is why you get the ground pound sometimes, which is really cool. Interesting. Nice. Good job, Marty. Very happy with that attempt at cannonless. Uh, very happy at that attempt at a wall jump. There we go. <laughs> it has been asked whether or not Martin Baseball is ADEF lore or PB Precipice lore. It's actually Challenger Approaching lore. There you go. So, but does that fit into the overall um, ADEF uh, IP complex? And it does now. I mean, 100%. Martin Baseball, what a good guy. What an outstanding lad. Best baseball. We all know it. <laughs> I don't think anybody's contesting this. Why does the timer start on intro menus instead of when you get control of Mario? Uh, it's just a timing difference that has existed for a long time. One that they are abject to change. Yes. Um, because then that would be like changing all of the leaderboards and going through and, like, editing all of the everything. Which sounds like a nightmare, so. I dread to ask, but Martin Baseball, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Let us regale you a uh, tale. Can we get some baseball emojis in the chat room, please? Uh, Mr. Martin Baseball. Mr. Baseball, if you will. Yes. Uh, is canonically my uncle. Uncle Martin. And Dangerous was there for the inception of Martin Baseball. I was. Uh, and uh, Uncle Martin is the CEO of baseball. <laughs> All of baseball. And he is a baseball. And that's really all you need to know. Yep. What more is there to say about He doesn't speak. <laughs> I, I, it's amazing that he has accomplished the things he has in his life knowing that he can't speak. Look, I'm, I, don't try to answer, I don't try to answer how does Martin baseball or why is Martin baseball. I simply answer who. Who is Martin Baseball? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of the right one. Which of the five W's is the only one that makes sense? <laughs> but wait, who, what, when, where, why? Yeah, you're right, there are five. And sometimes how. Why do they all start with W? This is actually... Yeah. It's interesting, right? English, why do all of the questions... English majors, get in the chat. We want to know. Okay, we made it past Womp's Fortress on this run. Not very well, uh, but that's okay. It was featured in Jeopardy once. Yeah, Martin Baseball was definitely a Jeopardy clue. This, this uncle of somewhat infamous streamer Adef is the CEO of Baseball. Uh, who is Martin Baseball? Uh, wow, amazed anyone got it. <laughs> that clue was submitted by some guy called Adef. Weird that he would submit a question about his own uncle. Yeah, also didn't know we did fan submissions. But... Inter- oh, here we go, yes. Wire mouse with the clutch. Interrogative words begin with WH because they all come from Indo-European words that begin in QW. 
the root change to Q-U in Romance languages, C or P in Celtic languages, C in Irish, Manx, and Scots, Gaelic, P in Welsh, Cornish, and Breton, and W or W-H in Germanic languages. All right. This is actually very cool. <laughs> this is epic. Yeah, because in, in French and Spanish, you have like K, and uh, like in French, there's col, which is win. Uh, y is qua. Yes, or that's what. true. Um, or no, that is why. Like, that's, that's very interesting. Oh, Mario, why'd you burn your booty? Oh, this is not good. Oh, this is very bad. All right, well, there's the reset. <laughs> All right, gamers, uh, stick around. We are going to be right back. This is just a short break to get up, stretch our legs, etc. Everybody, stick around. Don't adjust your sets. We'll have more Super Mario 64 16 star attempts, more dangers, and more PB precipice right after this. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. My name is Adef, and this is PB Precipice, the show all about runners on the precipice of getting a personal best. Some quick announcements before we get back into things. Submissions for Frost Fatales are opening tomorrow until the 26th of November. That's 12 days to get submissions in. You can find information at gamesdonequick.com slash framefatales or the GQ Twitter to submit your games and volunteer applications. Your subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gift subs, and Bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel helps support Games Done Quick, both with Hotfix and with AGDQ 2023 costs, so please consider subscribing if you enjoy the daily GDQ content. Okay, Mr. Danger, welcome back. Uh, I will say something we forgot to do that we really should have done, and by we I mean me, is plugged you. Oh. It, is Im it is important to follow dangers on Twitch, I would say. So important that, and this is true, it was mandated by the United Nations recently. They don't agree on much these days, but they agreed on this. Uh, you actually are legally contractually obligated by being a citizen of the world uh, to follow twitch.tv slash dangers. And with the new shout out feature, you can literally click the button at the top of the screen. If you're on YouTube, the link is in the description. Dangers, take it away. Yeah, I mean, by that metric, if there aren't 8 billion people following my Twitch channel, then we all go to jail, so. We are crossing that 8 billion mark really soon. Yeah, so I've heard. In a matter of days, apparently. If Nick Cannon keeps it up, we'll be there even sooner. Hey, yo. That's a, that's a topical joke for you. <laughs> One that went over my head. He's a, an American celebrity who just keeps having kiddos. Oh, okay. He just really likes having them. Uh, you know. In retrospect, maybe not the best joke in the world. <laughs> but I am in rare form today, so... Sometimes it just be like that. Um, you know, who's not having lots of kids? Mario. None we don't all, know fact. that. We don't know that. Maybe there's That's a. That's true. Maybe there's a a, 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 a a litter of Mario babies. <laughs> don't think litter is the right <laughs> word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what species he is. Um, I guess you're right. A human? Not human? Is what not are human? donk? What what are donk? Are those human? I I don't know, actually. I think Look, like all, all I'm saying is I feel like the no, go ahead. If you if you go to the Mario Wiki, which of course is just the most esteemed place that you can go for factual Mario information, um, they list the species as like new donkeys, like not human. But they so then they also list Mario, Mario as? as human. So all right, I'm literally going to the Mario wiki and clicking Mario, so this is a good start. What are Donk? His species is listed as human. Yes. Okay, so what about Peach? Also 
also human? The Mario wiki is very slow. <laughs> <laughs> it does not load quickly. Also human. Okay, you dog. Well, let's go to Pauline. Hang on. What does this mean for Pauline? Pauline is, is listed as human, but she's the mayor of New Dock City. Wait, wait, wait. The New Donkians are not called New Donkians. They're called New Donkers. New Donkers. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. All right, this wiki does not know what it is talking about. <laughs> the relative, it, okay, new donkers, yes, are listed. They do not have a race. They do not, because I think the race. I'm on the page for the race. Okay. Uh, okay, Mario Wiki, get your act together. Notable members of New Donkers are listed as Pauline and the band musicians, but we just saw Pauline's page. And she's a human, not a New and Donker. And she's a human. And the New Donkers, there's a, a, a part in the New Donker uh, uh, wiki page that says relatives, human. Okay. Yeah, things New are Donkers. Very wait, but, wait, but, okay. Now the first paragraph of the New Donker page reads, New Donkers are human characters found primarily in the New Donk City region. So they're humans, but their relatives are humans. <laughs> Very confusing. Yep. Mario lore writers, you need to get your act together on this one. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh -huh. This might be the cleanest run out of Womps yet. I shouldn't say. I have, a, I have an important link for chat. You should click that link, Dangerous. Donker Mail. Oh, there he is. Look at him go. <laughs> Look at him go. It's like a fully rendered 3D model. Just vibing. <laughs> I can practically hear him saying, Give myself to do. Okay. Yay! Yo! Oh, tap! That just took me phone. That just took me phone. Keep my cell phone carried. Keep us up, old Gary. <laughs> Yo. Yo. I'm sure we've talked about this, but because every time that I talk to you, this is what we talk about. <laughs> we have nothing else to talk about aside we from genuinely, the new Donk City residents. We genuinely talk about the Donkers every time. <laughs> but We're just bonkers. Bonkers for the Donkers, that's right. Um, that's right. But right. we... In Twilight Princess, Midna's speech, like the way she talks, is like real words that are being jumbled. I think you told me about this. And it's like it's like auto-generated for like a list of these like phrases. Um, and sometimes she will, and it's like reversed maybe sometimes, but sometimes she'll say something that sounds like genuine words. And it's always really jarring. Like there's a, there's a clip on my channel uh, when I'm in the inter-lake bed split in a Twilight Princess any percent run, and she says, what do you want, goon, when I called her? And I was like, what? Whoa. It's really weird, because usually she's just like, I don't do it, but occasionally yeah. real English will occur. And it's random every time? I think so, but there are, like, it's not a proper random because people have gotten the same sound bites before. Right. Okay. He's gaming. We are finally gaming. Of course, going into Dark World is probably not the best time to say that because this is the hardest but also funnest level in the run. So we'll see how it goes. Yahoo! 
speed kick here. Nice. Oh, but then I missed my triple, of course. Still gaming. There is some gaming happening. Jump kick there. Okay, yep, we kind of left that red coin behind, but that's okay. Oh my goodness, what is happening? Okay, well, that was a very interesting backup. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to move right on back to the beginning of the game. May I interest you in Donker Mail? Oh, please do. I don't know what Donker Mail is, but... It's the gift that I sent. Oh, yes. Moments ago. Just keep sending that. You just keep it on your screen. I, you know, I could do that. I lost the link, though, which is very sad. I'll get it for you. <laughs> 8F coming in clutch. There you go, guys. Most, I'm going to read the second paragraph now. Most of the new donkers, both male and female, wear gray business suits. Wow, I actually never <laughs> realized how weird that is. Yeah, all Everyone, of them. they're living in like a totalitarian state where they like all have to wear the same clothes except for Pauline. And the musicians. And the, uh, the hat shop. True. Uh, workers. The male new donkers also wear ties, gray fedoras, and shiny black shoes. I, I love, can I say, I love fan wikis because the way things that are not real are described is truly something else. While the female new donkers wear gray sun hats, the only new donkers who do not wear gray attire are the members of Pauline's band who all wear red attire and black fedoras with a white band around it, and the crazy cap employees, but they're not listing Pauline. So this wiki has already disagreed with itself like three times as to whether Pauline is a new donker or not. Yeah, or just a human of some kind. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool, Peach. Someone in chat says, my favorite pickup line is walking to a person you're interested in and saying, can I interest you in donker mail? <laughs> and then just providing that. I think I know what I'm going for is Halloween for Halloween next year. <laughs> donker mail. I'm going as donker mail and I'm only going to talk in new donkey and all yeah. night. <laughs> just take my phone. Mr. Suffolk carry? Yo. <laughs> Clay, you are in the hospital. What do you need? Mm, I just took me phone. Come on, so today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. Okay. <laughs> At least I can say okay. Okay. Are you hungry? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Yay. <Yo. laughs> We're going for pizza. You want some? Yo. Your wife is dying. Okay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my goodness. What? I clipped through the bomb. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. It's me, Mario. Luigi was listed as a different species than his brother? No way. For is a time. Human, is this as human now? Dear Mario. Of course, they list his full name as Luigi Mario, and then they have to provide a, a superscript, like, reference material so that you believe him. Yeah. <laughs> they are the Mario brothers. Therefore. Therefore. Visa V concordantly also end as well as. Mario. I couldn't have put it better myself. What about Bowser? Is he listed as a Koopa? I would hope so. Yes, yeah, he's listed as a Koopa. If you think about it, like, what happened to him to make him so big? Uh, radioactive poisoning. Okay. Which implies that 
some member of the Mushroom Kingdom is developing either nuclear power or nuclear warheads. Yeah. <laughs> um, Donkey Kong, I imagine. One can only assume that's where old Donk City went. That's right. There was a Chernobyl-type incident. <laughs> And, and now they old honor Dunk him. Cities, no now they more. honor him. Maybe that's Ruined Kingdom. Oh, oh! Now we're getting somewhere. Well, now we're really in it. Now we're now we're in it. The fan theories are growing. <laughs> Here we go. I hope the lore that's historians true. have their pen and papers out right now. That's why they call it the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh, oh! oh, oh. Is All that right. why the mushrooms make you grow absurdly? Because mu normal Mario... mushrooms don't do that. Okay, is Mario a race of super person that's able to consume radioactive material? I think so. Maybe that's why Luigi that. and Wario and Waluigi are so weird. They're like, they can, but it's like bad for them. Yeah. I think that makes sense. It's all coming together. Not that Mario's not weird. He just has priorities. Yeah. <laughs> Saving princesses from giant radioactive turtles. I think everybody in Mario might have a little bit of some, some, some going on. Yeah, for sure. My favorite way of messing up cannonless is not pressing up on the control stick for long enough. It's my favorite. Love that. You sound like me. I mean, no, correct me if I'm wrong. But it sounds like that was sarcasm. No, I actually, I genuinely, I love losing time. I love it so much. So much. We need to revisit Ruin Kingdom with a Geiger counter. That's right. You hate to see it. You know, I didn't think I was going to lose this many runs to Cannonless today, but here we are. We got time. We got plenty of time. Yeah, we, we we're only halfway through the show. Not even. He's come to the kind of cool thing about having a three-hour show for a 20-minute category means that there's plenty of opportunities to get something going. That's right. What else should we look up on the Mario Wiki while I'm here? Any, any, any long-standing questions you have about um, gaming? I mean, there's, there's lots of races in the Mario universe that just like, where did they come from? Why do they exist? Why is this a thing? Um... Like, one question I've always had is, like, why did they choose, like, at the turn of the Wii era, why did they choose Spike, which is, like, kind of a Koopa, but not really the, that thing that, like, spawns spiky things out of its mouth and then throws them at you? Like, why did they make him one of the the races that they decided to put in, like, all of their spinoffs for some reason? You know what I mean? Like, he was in all the Mario parties all of a sudden. Um, it's just, like, he just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, what, what makes Spike a relevant character? In that they, universe. they just like him. And what happened to Birdo? Like, where did Birdo go? Let's go to Birdo's page. Here's the question. Will it say race Yoshi or will it say relative Yoshi? Hmm. It says maybe it, maybe it'll comparable. Say comparable <laughs> Yoshi. <laughs> it's not Subject related. origin dinosaur. So just, just vaguely related. But now on, on the now on the now on the Mario Wiki page for dinosaur, which is mind you, a real thing. Yes. Uh, prehistoric non-avian dinosaurs are one of the many types of creatures that have appeared in Mario games. A few different dinosaur species exist in Mario's world, such as Yoshi's, Birdo's, and Rex's. True. I forgot about the Rex's. Why is the Super Mario Odyssey dinosaur not listed? It certainly should be. They have Tricky from Diddy Kong Racing listed. Plessy is listed as dinosaur. I think that's fair. Also valid, yep. There's also Dory. Is Dory listed? Can I edit this page to include the dinosaur from Super Mario Odyssey? <laughs> They've left out a vital piece of information. 
They have. T-Rex from Odyssey has its own page. I'm just mad. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that was a firsty. Uh-oh. You can't have a firsty on that trick. Um, but it did say non-avian dinosaurs, and I guess T-Rexes fall into the avian category, because birds are just dinosaurs. I yeah, know. but I don't I don't really know the lore of like which dinosaur species evolved into birds and which just like didn't. Um But the implication of non-avian dinosaurs sounds to me like they're just disincluding like pterodactyl. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess that's perhaps true. But I don't know. The Mario Wiki did not say much, and there's no second page for non-avian. So I'm going to have to go to real Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this journey we are on. Okay. The fossil record shows that birds are feathered dinosaurs. This is real Wikipedia. This is this is the fan wiki for Earth. The fan <laughs> wiki for Earth. <laughs> the fossil record shows that birds are feathered dinosaurs, having evolved from earlier theropods during the late Jurassic epoch, and are the only dinosaur lineage known to have survived the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event approximately 66 million years ago. Dinosaurs can therefore be divided into avian dinosaurs, birds, and the extinct non-avian dinosaurs, which are all dinosaurs other than birds. Okay, that doesn't really see. help me. So either it's a bird or it isn't. Here we go! <laughs> what is there to get? <laughs> yeah, 50-50, right? Yeah. Um... Okay, it seems like small feathered dinosaurs became birds, and those are avian. That sounds like velociraptors and things. Yeah, velociraptors, like Archeops, etc. Wait, is Archeops the name of the Pokemon, or is that the name of the actual... That's the name of the Pokemon. But it's based on a thing. Funny enough, like, pterodactyls and stuff like that are not the dinosaurs that you would think turned into birds. Like, they are unrelated. Yeah, I'm gonna stop going down this rabbit hole because I'm not a paleontologist, and I feel like I am really just muddying the waters. Uh, <laughs> Archaeopteryx, thank you, that's the name of the actual thing. That was a dinosaur, uh, yes. Yes, I'd like everybody to just do their own research, and... Evolution is cool. That's why. That's my 411 on this. That is, yeah, the ADEF thesis of the, the hour. History Evolution is cool. Is cool. <laughs> Very insightful. Thank you for your, for your input. Yeah. All right, how are we feeling about this run, Dave? Um, I mean, we're a couple seconds behind, um, but that's, that's okay. We're allowed to be, for now. We could have, like, a really good Dark World and bring it back. Which would be pretty cool, if you ask me. I'm looking forward to it. That's not, nope, not what I wanted. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, we're sticking a silly kick up this ledge. Okay, and then we're not going to grab that ledge. That's great. Uh, remember that really good dark world I was talking about? Uh, that is not this one. Hate to break it to you. That's okay. But we're going to... What? Oh. Come on, dark world.
Work with me here. <laughs> it's so funny because when we went to break, I went to go get some coffee and go to the bathroom, and then I came back and I sat down and I did Dark World, and it went flawlessly. Just perfect. <laughs> that's, hey, that's what it is. That's what it means that, to be a speedrunner. It's true, yeah. Always good in practice. Always good when the timer's not running. That's just how it goes, baby. My favorite is, like, the hardest trick in Odyssey at the beginning of the run is DSS, like, unquestionably. And it's actually kind of required that you do get it, like, on the first or even second try, just to keep the run going in some instances because of other tricks that follow. Um, and so there's a lot of resets that happen there. And some days you just don't, it's just not going on for you. And then you're like, okay, I'm just going to stop. The timer's going to stop. We're going to practice this for a minute. And then, of course, as soon as you, like, commit to that, and you just get it first try. And you're like, well, that's cool. <laughs> An interesting piece of PV Precipice that people don't often do, but you certainly can do. I, I You know, I, I never explicitly say it, but, like, you obviously could. Is you really could just sit and practice something for a bit if you really wanted to. That's true. That's true. We could do that. Um, whether we actually do or not, I'm... I don't know. I haven't decided. I feel like I'm well-oiled enough to get the run going. Hey, yo. It's just a matter of making it happen. So. I'm doing pretty good at Owl List today, which I'm pretty happy about, because that's probably the hardest trick that I do. Of course, now that I've said that, I'm going to fail in this room. Almost certainly. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh no. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, Womp's Fortress is really difficult, I would say. You're going to see a lot of the runs, you already have seen a lot of the runs kind of end here. Yep, I didn't think so. Too far left. I'm crying. So your decision to do cannonless before owl is sometimes... Is that just based on your confidence level in one or the other? Um, I do think that owl is harder. And by that metric, I probably should be doing it first. However, I think the reason that I do cannonless first is because it has a backup. Uh, so if I miss it, then I can just go for the backup. Whereas if I miss Owlless and I miss it like three times, then the run is kind of just over. I'm kind of building myself up some hope, you could mm. say. Like, yeah, my run is over now. Um, so it kind of it kind of gets the trick that has like a genuine backup out of the way first, and then it. I don't know. I, I I guess you could really do them in any order, and I know that a lot of runners will do Owlless first because it is harder. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just kind of personal preference. Sometimes you just kind of fall into a flow. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't know why you do things. But... Look, here in the world of ADEF, we're big on preaching mentality and speedrunning. True. So whatever keeps the mentality buoyant is good. Got to keep the, the brain waves active and flowing in the right direction. That's right. There's an actual question in chat, which, given what we've been discussing for the last hour, valid. Uh, Danger's mentioned that he has a controller with an improved analog stick for Bowser spins. Is there a reason he doesn't use it for the rest of the run? Yes. Um, it's funny. I was like, okay, this controller, like, why would I use the, the not-so-great N64 controller if I have this one with a better control stick? And the answer is that the control stick, and this might sound really funny, is too good. Um, there is, like, the dead zones in the N64 controller kind of allow you to be more precise in a way that is hard to explain. Um, basically, like, if you make really precise movements on the, the control stick for the Bowser spins, um, it's harder to control Mario because it's almost like, it's almost too sensitive, if that makes sense. 
Like, if I just touch the Bowser throw control stick just, like, a tiny little bit, it'll send Mario running in the direction that I've pushed. Um, whereas this control stick is, like, really stiff and really crummy, um, so I'm able to be more precise with it with, like, more motion on the control stick, if that makes sense. Like, if I, if I push the control stick to the left, uh, he's just going to start tiptoeing to the left rather than, like, full-on sprinting in that direction. So it's actually that the control stick on that other controller is too good. Um, the best example that I can give you is, like, cannonless right here. When I come up here and I get up on this wooden bridge, when I was trying to do it with the other control stick, it was, like, so sensitive that it was basically impossible. Like, I would fall off the bridge ten times out of ten. And it's really strange that that is the case, because, yeah, I wish that I could play with that control stick all the time. But, yeah, it's just too sensitive. You know, Danny dabbled in 16 Star for a bit earlier this year. He did. You guys should do a race. I don't know what his time ended up being, but I know that he also had a lot of fun just practicing Dark World over and over and over again. He told me he like spent hours doing the the red coin route a bunch. I think I think it was murdering his hands a little bit. Yeah, and I don't know if I just have, like, immunity to that because I've been doing Mario speedruns for as long as I have. I'm kind of used to that. Um, there's probably a different level of physicality that Zelda games require, whereas this is, like, really fast inputs, and I don't know how, how it differs because I've not speedrun very many Zelda games, but I think you're right. I think he did say that. He has an 1852. 1852? Okay, so... Uh, get in the cage, Marty. He wants to sit. Second try is fine. I will take it. Nineteen fifty-two. That's. I mean, that is that is pretty good. It's not better than you, though. Not currently. But maybe it's definitely. You definitely have the Speedrunners and Dragons 16 star world's record. Thank goodness. <laughs> I, I am the Mario Speedrunner of the bunch, so I would hope that I was able to accomplish that. I bet Patty has a 16 star time. He, he has a oh, that's true. 64, boy. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing like ROM hacks and stuff lately, I think. And yeah, he's always been, a, always been a fan of the SM64 stuff. Yeah. And his, um,. His dexterity, like his ability to play Super Mario 64, is definitely there. You can tell that he knows what yes. he's doing. Yes. I think that's like, it can be pretty apparent in some games, but in Super Mario 64, absolutely. Like, if someone has a grasp of the controls, you can tell versus someone who does not. I have always loved the. like. In certain games, when you can just look at, like, if you're experienced enough in the game, you can just look at the gameplay and, like, be really cognizant of beginner and experienced. Um, I think that's a really cool dichotomy. For sure. I think Mario games have that in general. Um, in Odyssey, it's like, it couldn't be more obvious. Yeah. First of all, you're rolling everywhere. Like, if you don't, <laughs> if you're not a speedrunner, if you don't have, like, good control of the game, a lot of the time, you'll just be running. Yeah, it's, well, it's, even, that makes it quite e obvious. Even the difference between intermediate and experienced speedrunner. That's true. Yeah. Like, there's just so much, the density so many spin things to, like, Yeah, there's so many, like, acute things to be aware of in that game. Or, like, vectoring or, you know, whatever. Yeah, the, the time save, like, really stacks up. Like, I, I always say that I feel like I'm doing exactly the same thing that Tyrone 18 is doing, and somehow he's still edging out in an any percent speed run, like, three minutes faster than I am. It's just, like, it's all the loose little things. They add up really fast. It's only two minutes, to be fair. True, yeah. To be fair to you, it's only two minutes. Oh, I missed my wall jump. Bleh. Bleh. That wall jump is probably the meanest one in the whole game. But I'm going to keep going just to see what happens. D 
do you think you're still within <clears throat> a place where you could die and still be me? Like in general, not just in this room. Oh yeah. Here we go. For sure. Um, that death is pretty costly. It's like 20 seconds, but you know, I can have three of those technically and still, still be in striking distance. That's, that's kind of the beauty of having a, a PB that is still like a minute off of my summer best is that there is still room for big mistakes, but I am trying not to make any. Right. We'll see how that goes. If I have a really good dark world, I'll keep this going. Gotta have one, you know? Mm. Let's put one good dark world on the board while I'm here. Oh, missed my wall kick. Oh well, that's fine. Oh, I did not think I was going to survive that. Okay, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Oh, not wait. too show. Oh. Oh. Okay. Sure. <laughs> that works. Good recovery. dance that time. My throws have been good too. Yeah. I don't think you've missed any yet. No, I think you're right. Even in that first run. Oh man. Okay, so see all the mistakes that I made in that um, in that dark world? Um, a lot of jankiness. A lot of, uh, a lot of, un like, shakiness. Still only lost five seconds to all of that, so that's, that's gold potential right there. But it's a hard level to get absolutely everything to go exactly right. And by the way, when Dangerous has lost five seconds, even because if you look at the time, you're like, wait, I thought you gained five seconds. Uh, he's talking about <clears throat> comparing to his best split there. Yes, correct. Yeah, I'm always I'm always kind of in reference to my sum of best because like my sum of best is my potential, what I know I'm capable of. So. Excellent, excellent, very good. I like that star. Yeah, there's something very satisfying about it, even though it's like short and sweet. Right. It's a good display of like momentum building in this game. Slopes are like really overpowered in this game. I didn't know he's. Wow. As somebody. I would consider myself somebody that has been around in speedrunning a long time. Yep. I have seen many SM64 runs in my day. I did not know he says boy. <laughs> Today you learned. I love that he says boy. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> wow. That's fine. Okay, this, I mean, we're holding on. We're holding on. The basement, I think, is pretty easy, so that's why I wanted to continue it if the Dark World was good. Um, but it does come down to the Dire Dire Docks split at the end of the day, I think. And then, of course, the BLJs. That's always a toss-up. Didn't punch Todd in the face. That's always a good sign. Um, nothing has really taught me camera control quite like this level. Because getting this wall jump really is determinant on, like, 
the camera angle that you have and the directions that you're holding your control stick into the notches and like I don't know coming from an Odyssey perspective because Odyssey is played on the Switch and the Switch controllers don't have notches like it's 360 control and then switching to this game where notches are basically everything like if you want to get a trick you have to be playing within the notches and stuff it's it's a weird it's a weird dichotomy it's one that I'm still not entirely used to yet Yeah, notch versus no notch is not something I think about very often, but it is something I experience, I guess, because in my school, uh, <clears throat> you know, like whether I'm playing Breath of the Wild or OT, like that's a big difference in yeah. maneuverability. It's just not something I think about a whole lot. Got to get up on that sub nice now. It's amazing how much time you can lose if you don't swim properly. Uh, oh, Marty, no. Okay. Did as well as we could, given the circumstances, I suppose. I feel like you can gold that level by a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the swimming speed is like, it's insane how much time that can save if you do it right. <laughs> eh. Okay. This is a level that I can gold a lot if if I can manage to get this cycle. I don't know what I'm missing to be able to get this first elevator cycle. I always end up having to wait at the bottom here for it to rise. But if I can manage to get the elevator cycle, then I save like 20 minutes. So, if I can figure it out, that would be a huge thing for improving this game. But it's a pretty tight cycle. Okay. See if I can get this throw here. Uh, nope. <laughs> Oopsies. Okay. Uh, we're gonna see what my best possible time says. <laughs> we are in like you could just do really well and gold everything that remains and still PB territory, so that's what I'm gonna try to do. <laughs> Let's see. No, I save and quit. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay, well, to be honest, I think that was probably like the best place to save and quit, to be honest, because. The alternative is like jumping back into Fire Sea and then just kind of just coming back to the lobby like this anyway. So I probably didn't lose all that much time. We'll see. We'll see what the damage is. <laughs> nice. 
Okay. Yeah, probably a little too much time loss, but that's okay. I'll finish this one. You know, if Mario wants to go up the stairs. Maybe. 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 There he goes. <laughs> Yahoo. 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 Are there any, like, besides LBLJ changing the route, are there any other stars that, like, you're doing in favor of other stars? Or are um, you pretty much doing everything that is done? For this particular route that I'm on, I think I'm doing everything as optimized as I can. Or choosing the choosing the stars that are the most optimized as they can, I suppose. Right. Um, but things definitely become more variable. Uh, that's not good. Yep. Told you, he's the final boss. He's the real final boss. You got Goomba. Oh my goodness. I got Goomba. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that ends that run, I guess. Back to the Dude, beginning. like, uh, one more reset, and then we'll do our second break. It's me, Works for me. Mario. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've actually... Oh, I have to... Wait, I have to... I save and quit, so that means I have to delete the file again, because... Mario. That's what happens when you save. It shows up there. Um, I don't. Yeah, I'm always like scared of that Goomba. I always see it, and I'm like, oh, oh he there he is. Here he comes. Um, I don't think he's ever actually killed a run before until today. So that's never happened before. Mario. Oh my God, he said the thing. <laughs> All right, this is the one. Wow, Colin is shot. He's come to For play. sure, yep. Three-pointer, 360 no-scope. Peach. All right. <laughs> Three-pointer, 360 no-scope. That's right. Mixing a few analogies here, but I'm here for it. Yeah. Wait, you don't 360 no-scope in basketball? I... If Steph Curry <laughs> dribbled... <laughs> to the top of the arc, spun around in midair. <laughs> I mean, he certainly has enough air time to like spin and shoot while jumping right. and sunk a three in a regulation NBA basketball game. I, I that might be the best thing that would ever happen. Yeah. And if he said 360 no scope out loud, while that was happening. That, I mean, yeah. I think you can just end basketball at that point. I mean, forget Martin Baseball. We'll be on Steph Basketball forever. <laughs> yeah, that's right. CEO of basketball. Uh, yeah. Bequeath him the reins. He is he's ready to do it. Okay. I'm in. Here we go. Yeah, he already does that thing where he does like a three pointer, and before it's even sunk, he just like starts walking away. Yeah, like, he's very good at that. <laughs> he's just he's just very good at basketball. I think he's the most competent three point shooter in basketball. I was I like I don't really watch very many sports, but I what I did come across this video. Sometimes you just on YouTube and YouTube yeah, takes yeah. places, and there was a video that like said that basketball is not the same game that it was like 10 years ago like it's all about the three pointers now there are a lot of like very competent three point players and so the game has kind of shifted to that dynamic the scores are getting higher um stuff like that steph curry is the all-time three-point leader with 3176 three-pointers dang Wow. 
That's kind of insane. I will say, when I went to Google Steph Curry just now, I did type Steph Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> On accident. I mean, that might as well be his name. You know, his dad and his brother also play in the NBA. Or, well, his dad played in the NBA. I think his brother plays in the NBA, I think. I think I do that. No, Marty. You're killing my speed run. And this is not a wall jump. Yup. All right, GG's. <laughs> All right, we're going to take our second break here, gamers. Everybody stick around. Do not go anywhere. We'll be back with more PB Precipice, more Dangers, and more Super Mario 64. 16 star attempts right after this. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Game Sun Quick Hot Fix. My name is Adef. This is PB Precipice. And some quick announcements before we jump back into things. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to press the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel, please. Also, go to twitch.tv slash Game Sun Quick if you're interested in looking at our live content. Starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, if you want to follow what Games on Quick is up to, use exclamation links in Twitch chat for all things GDQ. And finally, next weekend, we have King of the Silent Hill, which will be a series of races featuring the Silent Hill series starting at 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. We'll also have Captain Toad Anniversary Special starting at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. Okay, Mr. Gamer. Final right. bit of attempts here. Let's see it. The last hour. This is the power hour. Let's go. Let's That's right. Did you say Captain Toad Anniversary Special? It's me, Mario. Yes. Like yeah. they're playing Captain Toad Treasure Tracker? Okay. I would imagine that's what it insinuates, yes. That's that sounds amazing. Insinuates Mario, implies. Please come to the castle. I have baked a cake for you. Yours truly. What an excellent creature, Peach. Captain Toad. Peach. Why is it that Dangerous is running this in English instead of Japanese? Uh, that is a great question. I would, for all intents and purposes, love to be running this in Japanese because I would be saving like five seconds. However, um, since this is the N64 and the N64 relies very heavily on physical hardware, I do not have a Japanese cart, <laughs> nor do I have the means to play one. So, or get one for that matter. But if I, if someone happens to slip one into my PO box one day, I would be eternally grateful for the five seconds you've given me. You just need to buy the Japanese cart and then the like special screwdriver. I think you're right, yeah. Because you can just I, like, I've done it for OOT a few times. Yeah, um, you can just kind of put it in a new. You just take the chip, right, and you put it in. A no, cart. all you do, all you do is you. Um, so it's a it's a special type of screw. So you need like a specific head. Yeah. Uh, and you unscrew the back of the cartridge, take off just the back, and unscrew an American cartridge. It can be anything. Yep. And then replace the back, and that's it. Right. So you, you don't even touch like the front of, and the chip. Yeah, there's a piece of plastic or whatever, right, that, like, gets in the way. Yes. Yeah. You can technically file it down, I think. Yeah, something like that. But I wouldn't recommend it. Cheese's 120 star is a U.S. cart? I don't think that's right. Um, but maybe, maybe you're talking about, like, the physical... Um, because I know it, which version is fastest depends on which category you're playing. Um, and for all, all of the categories except for 70 star, Japanese is the fastest. Um, and it just so happens to be that way that 70 star is for some reason faster in English. And I think it just has to do with like some stars are like put in a block in the Japanese version or, or no, not put in a block in the Japanese version, but put in a block in the English version. Um, there's text boxes in English that are way slower than they are in Japanese. It's just like all sorts of little weird quirks. Um, if you play the Japanese version of this game, Princess Peach, in the opening sequence, talks to you in the English version, which wastes three seconds. So for this category especially, Japanese would be faster. A raid. Spike Vegeta, Ooh. thank you for the raid. Welcome in, everybody. This is PB Precipice, which is a hotfix show all about runners who are just about to get a PB. So Dangers is on today, showing off Super Mario 64 16 star, in which he is very close to a personal best. And we are in our final stretch of attempts here. You're in just in time. Dangers is in fighting form here. 
Uh, right. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. I believe that Spike, Vegeta, and Nukes are on a show right after this. Am I right? I think that's correct. Uh, it's Dangerous to Go Alone is, of course, the show that directly follows PB Precipice with our very own lovely Frozen Flygon. Uh, it's a show all about co-op speedruns, and I think Spike and Nukes are playing on that. Very nice. It'll be an OT rando co-op. Nice. Those are fun to watch. Aren't people usually close to beating their own PB? I would say no. <laughs> uh, you either might not have played the game in a while, or maybe your PB is really hard to beat, or maybe you're just not practiced. But, you know, people I have on this show are like, they are ready to go, they're de-rusted, they're close, they've come close several times. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's not so simple as everybody is on the, the cusp of PB, because sometimes, you know, sometimes you're just, yeah, like you said, de-rusting, or, uh, you know, sometimes you hit plateaus as well. It's not always easy to beat your PB. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Feels weird to get this star, like, the normal way. I'm so used to getting it as the backup to Cannonless. <laughs> right. Actually climbing the tree and going that way? Wow. Okay. I mean, knock on wood, that means we should be in the clear for Womp's Fortress, which is pretty cool. Oh, can I hear okay. what? Oh, uh, can I hear your best romp impression? <laughs> yes. Uh, That's pretty good. There it is. <laughs> That's pretty good. We were trying to get text to speech to imitate. It's way harder than you might think. No, uh, I think it's really hard. <laughs> I would yeah. not, that sounds hard. <laughs> they just did not get the syllables right. And then when we thought we had a banger, when we thought we were, like, onto something, um, it would just, like, read the letters out anyway, instead of, like, saying the, the word. <laughs> We'd be like, well, I guess at least we tried. Okay. Okay, that was a nice side flip there. Very good, Marty. Proud of you. Hey, the numbers are green coming out of Womp's Fortress. Let's go. Oh Let's my see. god. Um, okay. Good job, Marty. <laughs> they will not be green coming out of Cool Cool Mountain, but that's okay. Are we jongling? asks Ray. Uh, yes. Certainly. We should do a prediction. Is that something we can do on the GDQ Hotfix show? I've seen it done. Yippee! I fun fact. Uh, let's do let's do Will Danger's PB on the show today. That's a good prediction. We can make that happen in the last hour here, and that includes this run. Yes. Here we go. Um. I will say, so I have, I obviously watch a lot of GDQ because I host these shows. Uh, I have 50,000 points, but I should have like 200,000 or 300,000, but uh, I don't predict very well. Nice. Good plays, good plays. Oh, we are green coming out of Cool Cool Mountain. I lied to you all. Live on television. Oh, can we stop having terrible exits out of the rooms, please? Ah, course is misspelled, Ray. You nailed it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Odds are at 50-50 right now. Okay. I like that. Yahoo! 
I almost don't want to predict because my luck is so bad with predictions on this channel. But I'm gonna do it for the fans. Do it for the fans! I'm dropping a fat 5k on yes. Ooh, somebody plopped 200k on yes. We got 150k on no right now. Uh, in okay. an individual, that is. Total points right now. Ooh, can we get a million? There's 30 seconds left, gamers. Can we get a million points in the pool? That'd be pretty sick. There's, there's 900,000 right now. Yes! One milli points! You love this. Thank you for participating, gamers. We will see who will be rewarded. Who will be rewarded. Wow! It went up to... 1.5? Nearly 1, 1. 1.6 million? Oh, the, these gamers are going hard. Yeah, the final odds are, uh, uh, like, almost exactly 50-50. Okay, sweet. Lot on the line. Someone bet 69,000 points. Very good. Very nice. Biggest, of... biggest bettors are 200k on yes and 146k on no. That's a lot. There's a lot of points. That means you're very dedicated to oh, ouch. the uh, the GDQ hotfix shows. You, you watch a lot. That's right. We we lucky to have you. If only there was a redeem for these points. There is. For five hundred thousand, you can do or. Orb. What Think is of orb? the clout. Think of the clout. True. Uh, it doesn't do anything. It just shows chat that you redeemed it. It's just like pure clout. Very good. Rewards like that are necessary. Boing. I think Richard, one of the producers, I think he just crossed a million points. Oh, Recently. that is that is a lot. I mean, he is always here. He basically lives here. So, yeah. Wait, Ray, how many points do you have? Ray has six fifty k. Basement is going pretty pretty saucy though. Imagine redeeming like three orbs in a row. Just like boom boom boom. Just because you can. Yeah. Just because you want to. I'm telling you, there's there's some magic behind point redemptions that are just cloud. Like in my channel, highlight a message is a million points. And I know there are a few people gunning for it right now. I was gonna say, has anybody done it yet? Uh, one person is close. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I have one person in my chat is, like, on the cusp of a million points. But that's a lot of points, as it turns out. As it turns out. As it turns out, that's kind of a lot. What is your million pointer? Uh, Aiden is my million pointer. No, 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 what is the... Oh, I don't have a reward for it. But they're oh, just gunning should. for it anyway. I should. I don't know what it should be. I've been gunning. I, I, I've never told you this. Because I disappointed myself and lost big on a prediction last year. Oh, oh no. But I've been gunning for 200k to swap the displays for a while now. Uh-huh. But we had, a, we had a big setback last year. And you just lost it all. Not all of it. But I think I'm under 100k now. Ah, uh, okay. Too much belief in me, maybe. I must have let you down. Somewhere I'm always a line. believer. I'm always a believer. Oh, no. 
no, 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 no. Oops, please do not do this to me. Go this way, sir. Okay. Didn't probably didn't lose that much time to all of that stuff that just happened. Okay, good clips. Good clips. Good clips from Mips. Yeah, probably about eight seconds or so, but we can also get a good sub. And that'll help us out a little bit. What? Mario, what are you doing? Martin. Yeah, I did it again. Too far, too far, too far. The lag, dude. The lag. The lag. Okay, we're still in PB territory. We're still in striking distance. It's gonna be okay. That's right. Oh, well, please go in. There we go. Boy, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna do that. I kinda have to wait for this cycle anyway, because I never make it. Uh, oh, this is not very good. Let's make it up in time. It's kind of slick. Oh, but I can't wait, I need the coins. <laughs> I forgot. Can't really do this method. I have no health. We might be able to slip this by. Still, we're going to lose some time in Lava Land, but that's okay. Luckily, we still have, what, 45 minutes? Yeah. So even if uh, this we like doesn't work out. 30 minutes and change. 30 minutes. There was a chance. There was a chance, but I blew it. It's me, Mario. Hello. Was the frame rate always this low? Says somebody in chat. Yes. On the N64, this is uh, this is pretty typical. If you watch top-level speedrunners play this game, you'll probably be like, "Hey, they don't have frame rate problems. What's what? What gives?" Um, and that kind of is part of the whole like. I guess, gimmick of playing on the N64 and, like, why a lot of, like, really top-level runners um, view it skillful to do so is because there are strategies to avoid the lag as much as possible. It's there, but if you tilt your camera in a certain way, sometimes you can avoid it. Um, and that makes the game much harder to play, as it turns out, but it's also part of the skill. That's okay. That was the that was the teaser. That was the one. Mm -hmm. This is the real run. That's right. <laughs> nope, just kidding. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that was the run? I lied. That that was just a facade. That one. <laughs> Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I have baked a cake for you. Yours truly. Yeah, I've thought about playing on Virtual Console, but I also don't really have, like, a good controller for it. Or, like, I guess on Emulator or whatever. Just to see what it's like on the other side, playing in a world where the graphics are a little bit crisper and uh, there is no lag to worry about.
Leavers, rise up. Press one in the chat. Press one in the chat if you have a one next to your name already. That's right. Oh, interesting. Apparently, I've forgotten how to do the fundamentals of this game. A lot of upscalers give an option to streamline some of the visuals. That is true, yeah. My setup is very, uh, you can tell that I'm used to speedrunning Switch games because my setup is very try and convert the signal to HDMI in the simplest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> Which does come with the disadvantage, like, I have rendered the screen to display in 4.3, um, you know, standard definition for everybody at home so that it looks normal, but my monitor actually doesn't render it in 4.3 for me, so I actually have to play in 16 by 9 which is maybe a hindrance to my ability to play the game, but... You're playing in 16 9 right now? Yeah. Bro. <laughs> I have to play Super Mario World like that, too. No. I know, it's a crime, but I don't have an alternative, so... I don't know if RetroTink... Does RetroTink... Why do I keep missing this? Does RetroTink... You, you should get a RetroTink. Okay, it does It does scale it to 4.3? Yes. On a monitor? Yeah, because whatever I have is just like a cheap alternative to that, so... No, get a RetroTink. It probably will they're save like, my life. They're relatively inexpensive and so good. Okay, you'll have to link me to a good one then, because I think I, the last time I went to the RetroTink website, I looked at it and I was like, there is like 7,000 of the same thing, but they're being marketed differently, and I'm a little bit confused. Yes, so. there are slight differences between what they are used for, but we'll, right. we'll find you a good one. Find me, yeah, find me a good one, and then maybe maybe that's the day I just pee me by 20 minutes, like immediately. You'll be surprised how good it will feel to see the game how it is supposed to be viewed. <laughs> I, I mean, I do have a good feeling, because I can see the differences right now. Like, I look up at my OBS feed, and the game is like, wow, that's what it's supposed to look like, instead of slightly wrong for a reason that's kind of hard to tell. I can't believe it. Like, it's just <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You know goodness. the Pokemon speedrunner Echi? Yeah. Echi, until last year, played off his OBS preview window. Oh no, man! No, 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 no! And he no, was no. like, he was like, the delay can't be that bad. And I was like, Echi, please! It's like half a second. And I knew someone who played switched, Odyssey he was like, like that. He was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I knew someone Odyssey? who played Odyssey like that. They had like the world record in Darker Side for a while too. Like they were good. It's like the, taking the training words off. Sometimes you don't have another choice, though, I guess. Like, this this person that I'm talking about, their name is Neo. Um, they just, like, didn't have another monitor to play on. Like, they they only had the one monitor. So they either played through their OBS Wendu or they, like, hid all of their other stuff. So. But I couldn't imagine. Yeah, that's a, that is a good point. What Ray says in the chat is very is very true. Like you kind of like mentally and physically adjust to the delay, so it seems crazy, but at the same time, brains are pretty incredible things. It's me, Mario. Hello. Okie dokie. Uh, now, input lag. That's a different story, I think. I think you can adjust to that too, but it is very jarring to play a game that you've played for a long time and then have be given a circumstance or given a, a situation where, like, you press a button and then, like, you just you can't you can't seem to to, to line it up. Yeah, I am owed the brain, like. I don't know. If you have a thousand hours in a game and you suddenly switch to a monitor with five milliseconds delay, I think you can tell. Yeah. You can adjust, but you can definitely tell. 
Also, Ray and I always have this disagreement, but Ray like cites this research about you can't tell the difference between 30 and 60. I'm like, that's that's bogus, dude. Uh, you show me, you show me a 30 and a 60 feed, I will. 48 and 60, I might not be able to tell. Ray, I swear you're the person that's always like you can't tell between 30 and 60. I swear that's you. Is that not you? Am I am I spitting am I spitting slander right now? What you're the one that is I, you are there's something you're saying. Peach. Oh, the delay one. Okay, never mind. Okay, yeah. I, I okay, good. All right, never mind. Everybody forget everything I just said. <laughs> There's definitely goes... somebody somebody I know was saying you can't actually tell the difference between 30 and 60 and I was like I you are you are nuts. Like I remember what? you talking about it. Yeah. It's very easy to see that for sure. It's like literally what are you talking about? 48 and 60 though could be could be a little tough. Hey, I have forgotten the spot on the bridge I'm supposed to land, so we're just going to keep going. Um, I do think that frame rate does have diminishing returns, though. Like, once you get past 60 frames per second and higher than that, then, of course, it starts kind of yes. becoming slightly harder to tell. Um, because, I mean, it's not necessarily factual that we see it, like, you know, one-tenth of a second or whatever like your eyes adjust to that or whatever like it's not how life works yeah the it also everybody quotes the thing of like the human eye can't actually see past whatever and it's like okay but the human eye doesn't have like a refresh rate like yeah exactly you're you're comparing to you're comparing apples and oranges like the refresh rate of a monitor is literally how quickly the monitor is reprinting the next image for you to view Whereas your eye, like your brain, is constantly interpreting imagery. Um, yeah. Yes, you could argue that like it's refreshing things, but there's no frames per second for your eye. There's no resolution of frames per second for your eye. You can extrapolate that number based on like how quickly you're able to cognitively understand information, but like it's different. Um, yeah, it's not the same. Yeah. There is, though, like, I think also one of the reasons why past 60 you can't really tell is because a lot of these games that are claiming to be past 60 FPS are still rendering their animations in 60. And so, like, it the game might technically be running at 120 frames per second or whatever, but the stuff is not, like... They're not interpolating frames in between those frames to make it 120 or whatever. Right. Most of the time. Like, the smoothness of turning your camera might be a giveaway. Uh. But. Yeah, they're, they're not like. They're not making animations that are like 240 FPS, and they certainly don't have an AI doing like. frame replacement in between. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the camera turn is probably the one. Like, it just, like, if it's more frames than 60, it's kind of just like smoothing in between. It's like when you see animation that's supposed to be rendered at like 30 or even like 24 frames per second, and then it's like upscaled to 60. Like, you can tell because there's like these weird, kind of blurry in between frames that make it feel wrong. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah, I don't doubt Ray's talking in chat about a Linus Tech Tips video about CSGO with monitors and high refresh rates. I definitely do think that, like, there are benefits to higher frame rate. And I'm not saying you can't not tell, uh, or that you can't tell. Uh, but all I'm saying is that, like, I think for a lot of these games, it's just, like, stuff they can put on posters. Yeah. Here we go! Just another kind of metric. Right. Um, now, the 240 FPS Super Mario 3D World Bowser dancing gif is important. <laughs> that is important. <laughs> Very important. And you can tell that is not 60. Let me pull it up. 
No, Marty. No. Oh, my goodness. That's annoying. That's like the worst way to lose that. <laughs> it's me, Mario. Hello. Okie dokie. Dear Mario, please come to the castle. 920 FPS, yes, apparently. Yours truly, Princess That's a lot of frames. Peach. It is really, <laughs> it's really strange looking. Uh, can you share? I don't know if I've, maybe I have seen this? Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you. I'll put it in the PV Christmas thing in Discord. Sounds good. Nine hundred and twenty frames per second. I'm sure it's not actually that number, but I couldn't tell you. The question being, though, like if my monitor has a refresh rate of sixty hertz, like what is the difference? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like. Where that's that's the other technical side. Not only like the input, but the output kind of matters too, doesn't that? Yes. I don't know. I'm just a dude <laughs> on the internet. I don't know anything about this stuff. So. Yeah, Ray, pop on the mic and tell us tell us something. Tell us a yeah. little something, something. It's me, Mario. Hello. Okie dokie. Hello. The stream can hear me. This is hey, weird. Oh my god, oh, Ray's, it's Ray's Ray's on the show. Got another one for you here, by the way, Dangerous. Here you go. Here's another good Bowser dancing so, diff. Display oh, the game or a video playing at higher FPS than your monitor can display does have an effect. That's part of what Linus Tech Tips was actually testing. Um, the most effective thing for improving your gameplay is the game running at a higher FPS even if your monitor can't display it because it makes the game run more okay. consistently. Um, so like the, the way they tested it was they were doing like pros doing trying to shoot people as they were going across small gaps with a sniper. Like testing things that they're very good at reaction time. When you have a higher frame rate, the window to be able to successfully click that when your reaction time is good enough is bigger. Because right. the game is giving you more active frames uh, where you can click. Because you know, we're talking about how the brain doesn't work in frames per second. So you have more milliseconds of when clicking while it's on the screen will result in a kill when the frame rate of the game is higher. Right. That makes sense. And then, funny enough, I think it kind of works in reverse. Um, I remember when I played Fall Guys, there was... Uh, it's pretty well known in the Fall Guys scene, if you're like playing it competitively, that you want to actually play on 59 hertz or 60 hertz instead of 144, for kind of the opposite reason. Um, because if there are more frames available for, for you to... The, the, the thing was like jumping on heads and jumping on hammers and stuff. It's like, because the game is getting its, like, its frame rate squashed, it leaves, like, if there were more frames for you to be able to do that hammer jump, it just, the game doesn't, like, register it, but if you kind of chop it down, it makes tricks like that possible all of a sudden. Yeah, it depends it's really on the game engine. Some games, when they're running at lower FPS, they handle that strangely. To the point where there's been, you know, plenty of PC games where there's speed strats of lowering your FPS, because just the physics behave different at lower FPS. Here we go! Right. Yeah. Long story short, it, it depends a lot on the game you're playing. It depends. Um, but yeah, to clear the slander from earlier, the brain is actually very good at seeing different refresh rates. Um, once you get above like 144, it's really tough. Like, I don't think the 200 refresh rate monitors are worth money. I don't think it makes much of a difference. Fair. Here we go. Nice shot, by the way, Dangerous. This is a good one. Thank you, yeah. Got Owlless. Got Cannonless. Hopefully we Ray, don't. 
Sorry, go ahead, Dangers. Oh, I was just going to say, hopefully we don't mess up the easy stars now. Ray, thank you for coming on and clearing up the slander as well as giving the gamers <laughs> no problem. Rest. Yes, thank you for the education. I wasn't expecting to learn things today, but here we are. Good luck with the runs, Dangers. Here we go. Thank you. Not like Ray is going anywhere, just kind of dissolving back into the background. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, so it's it's 3.36 right now. So I would say if this resets, probably only have time for like one more full. Sounds good. Conversely, if this finishes, we'll just call it. Yep, that sounds fair. Am I going to grab this star? Please? Nice. Here we go. Okay. Getting out of womps. Now. <laughs> Here we go. Getting out of Womps on the best pace we've had all day. That's pretty cool. Some five. We take those. Nice. I'm loving the dance emotes we got in the chat. This game has a good soundtrack. I think that... All, I could probably say that about all Mario games, though, to be honest. It's hard to find a bad Mario soundtrack. So, small child, come with me, please. You know, whenever I do the star, it makes me think about some things. Like, I, I think it's generally considered that what speedrunners do is, like, harder than playing the game casually sometimes. But I don't think that's true all the time. That star is a good example. Like, I, I remember trying to ferry um, the little penguin down the mountain the quote-unquote, like, casual way and having a very difficult time when I was a kid. Um, I did not know that you could just slide down the mountain like that. But if I did... I'd probably have a much easier time. Here we go. Nice backup. Thank you. Still green. Yeah, a lot of like SMB1 levels are easier to speedrun than to play slowly. Agreed. Yep. It's amazing, like, I guess it's kind of a, an objective statement, though, or I guess a subjective statement, because, like, we know your ability. Yeah, your ability to, like, control momentum and stuff is something that might be kind of hard if you're not used to that. Right, I think also, like, I know where the enemies in the pits are. Yeah, exactly. So, I guess what actually makes things easier is not necessarily the strats, but the knowledge. Okay, that was something. I don't know what's happening right now. I've never had to back it up in this way. But then, conversely, though, like, there are games for which, um, like, if this, if the same player with the same amount of knowledge played one level slow, like played the same level slowly and quickly, the quick version might genuinely just be easier. Like the cycles are nicer, the the way the enemies line up is nicer. And yeah. Ray brings up a good point about Ninja Gaiden. Like Ninja Gaiden Act Six especially is like so much harder slowly. I mean, it's still an incredibly hard act. It's one of the hardest levels in the game, in my opinion. Uh, like six two and six three. Um, that's not where the bomb is. 
not even close, actually. There we go, I found it. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's just a little bit of a ways out of the way. Uh, okay, well, the numbers are still green, so that's a good sign. Alright, we're gonna make up for it with it. Uh, just a beautiful basement. Just a beautiful basement. And leaving time safe for the next run. Very important speedrun strat in general. Yes. If we played all of our speedruns perfectly every time, then we would kind of run out of stuff to do, and they would be less fun. So that's just what I'm, I'm future-proofing, so that there's more content later. That's what I'm doing. Totally. Very nice. I will never not say boy there. It's very funny. <laughs> it's just it's just so cheeky. Mario, you're so cheeky. Cheeky boing. Alright, I this will probably be the last one. This is the last one? Yeah. Alright. Unless you reset right now. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Here we go. Why does it say PB is over an hour? It does not. It does not. It is possible you're looking at the uh, the sub split. Or not the sub split, but like the, the segment time rather than the, the full run time. But you'll notice that that number changes every time I hit the split button. And also that's 1 minute 18 and point thirty. Correct. So those are milliseconds on the right. Very good, very good, very good, very good. As always, it's going to come down to DDD and Fire C. As is tradition. As is tradition. As is written in the scriptures. Gospel according to dangers. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty clean. Nice. I'll take that. Catch this bunny. What? I missed? Okay, that's fine. Weird. A little bit strange. I don't know how I missed him. He kind of just like ran right through me. We still got lots of time to to waste if we need to. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I don't usually employ very many like anti-lag strats, but I do hear you'll notice I turn the camera. Yeah, I had been seeing that when you've gotten here. That's because this sub is very laggy. Okay. It's a little bit faster than I have been doing it, so I'll take it. I'll take it. Losing a bit of time to MIPS, but I kind of expected that. We're still okay. We're still okay. We're gonna bring it home now. Bring it home for Marty. Do it for Mario! Oh, why did you ground pound there? That was probably my best chance I've ever had at getting the cycle. And now I'm lighting my booty on fire. Oh no, the green, the green. Oh, it got me, it got me. Man down. Man down! This part is notoriously laggy as well. <laughs> Let's go. Hopefully this throw goes exactly according to plan. That would be pretty cool. Nice. That's what we like to see. Good. Pretty good LLL, if I do say so myself. That's not the the level we're in. We're in Fire Sea. Yeah. Close, close enough. In a dead heat with PB right now. Yeah, that's a good time save right there. All right. It all comes down to this. BLJ's Bowser in the Sky. No easy feat, I must admit. He admitted. Come on, Marty. Oh, that sucks. I didn't catch. Please go through. I will be your friend if you go through. Okay, we're friends. Uh, right, I, I swear to God, you can see the cleanest BLJs in history and nobody ever does that staircase right. Yeah, you're right. Because it's like, it's very awkward. Uh, no, we lost time. Uh-oh. Oh, come on. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's baloney. No. Well, there it goes. Doubters are rewarded. Yeah, there's there's no saving this one, unfortunately. <laughs> I feel like SM64 always comes down to ELJs in this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I tried my best, and we don't can quite we, have enough time. But. Can we get a shout out for Dangers, please? Another shout out here. Please do follow Dangers, good friend of the show, excellent gamer, tremendous, wonderful person. You can see lots of Mario gaming over there, whether it be Odyssey, PB attempts, SM64, or even these days, a little bit of SMW. That's right, uh, a little bit of everything. Just check it out. Um, thank you for the plug. I'm going to go ahead and just finish this run, I guess, because yeah. if Mario will move forward. 
There we go. Because might as well, you know? Oh, okay. Bowser's tail is uh, very hard to grab. Ah, uh, I wouldn't have gotten the good throws anyway. It's good to know. Good to know. Putting my doubt away. Um, but yeah, I am kind of doing like varietal Super Mario speedrunning content. So if you like watching Mario go fast, uh, faster than this, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> then my, my channel is the place to go. Um, yeah, we do mostly Odyssey is kind of my focus. Um, in fact, later today I'm going to be doing Super Mario Odyssey Dark Side. Um, which is not the most popular category, but I think it's one that deserves a little bit of recognition sometimes. Um, but then on Tuesdays I do Super Mario World. And on Thursdays I do Super Mario 64. Um, just kind of improving all over the board. So... I do love Mario Speedrun. Even when it is even when it is mean to me, like this. There we go. Good solid finish. G G dangerous. GG's. Thanks, Adef. Nice. Thank you for having yeah, me on the show. Yeah. Any uh, any final thoughts here? Um Gaming. Uh make sure you go check out twitch.tv slash Adef. He does good work, and he hosts this show, and then he also does stuff on his own channel that is very fun to watch. Kaizo Ironmon, I've been addicted to watching it, so thank you for providing the content. I'm here to provide the content. I appreciate that, Dangerous. Um, yeah, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been a, a great year of PV Precipice, hopefully more to come, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, what do you have to look forward to right after this? Do not adjust your sets. There is good stuff in the pipeline right now. Uh, we have It's Dangerous to Go Alone. There will be a uh, Ocarina of Time randomizer co-op run. I believe maybe Pot Sanity uh, with uh, Nukes and Spike, hosted by our very own Frozen Flygon, so be sure to stick around for that. Also, if we can pay out the doubters on this prediction, the doubters are rewarded for their doubt. Congratulations, doubters. And some final announcements here. Uh, next weekend, we have King of the Silent Hill, which will be a series of races featuring the Silent Hill series starting at 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. We'll also have Captain Toad Anniversary Special starting at 1 p.m. Eastern the next day on Sunday. And tomorrow is Awfully Silly starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, followed by That's Never Happened Before. All right, gamers, thank you so much for watching PB Precipice. Stick around as there is more gaming coming up right after this.